Okay, today we're going to be looking at creating an error function for our script that will, you know, display a message and exit out of our script. Uh, so let's go ahead and just jump right in. Uh, here I am, I'm in an empty directory. I made a folder called errors just for this script. So let me go ahead, I'm going to use Vim as my text editor, but as always, use whatever text editor you would like. Uh, and I'm going to create a script called errors.sh. How about that? And it's going to be a shell script, so I'm going to say bin bash here because it's a bash script. Now we know, or we should know, uh, that echo dollar sign and then a number would be that argument. So if I say dollar sign one, uh, so I can exit out of the script, make it executable, and then I can say errors. If I do that, nothing shows up because I didn't pass anything. If I say this, it will print this. If I write that, it will write that. Uh, if I write this and that, it's still going to just write the first word unless I put it in quotations. So what we're going to do is we're going to check is the user giving um, that input, that first argument. If not, we want to exit with an error, okay? So we'll go back into our script here. And all we have to do is say this. So that's just checking, that's like an if then statement, it's shorthand, but it's saying, look at this first argument. If it's empty, do this, if it's if it's something. So we would say ampersand, ampersand, echo, yes, if they put something, ampersand, or pipe, pipe, echo, no, if they forget it. So we'll go ahead, run this script. If we don't give any input, it should say no. And if we give in a first argument here, whatever it is, it will say yes. Okay. So we don't just want to display something, we want to exit. And we want to exit uh, with an exit code of one, meaning that the script failed. Uh, so there's a few different ways we're gonna do this, but we're gonna create a function. So let's go ahead, go back into our script, and I'm gonna create a function. I'm gonna type function error. But you can call your function wherever you want. You can say fail or fatal error or whatever. Uh, again, as I always say, you don't have to write function. I just think it looks cleaner and makes it more defined. This is a function. Uh, and what I want to do here is, well, we can just say exit, right? So I can come down here. If it fails, we will run. I could just say exit here and it would exit out of the script. We don't want to say exit. We want to say exit one. Okay, so we could do that. So we're not even gonna call our function. We'll do this, it says yes, if we don't give it that, it now exits with one. If I say uh, dollar sign question mark, that will give me the exit code of the last code. So that will tell me that script failed. So I can then run this script and check it. Uh, let's go back into here, but I wanna display a message as well. And if I was to do something like this, I could create a sub process. I can say echo no, and then I can say exit one, uh, but that's not going to work properly uh, because it's a sub function. So it's just gonna exit out of that sub function. Uh, so sub process. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna forget about the what does when it's proper because we're just gonna exit if it fails. We don't care about what happens. It's gonna continue if it's true. So we don't care about when it's true at this point. So here I'm just gonna say, okay, if this fails, then error. But we don't just wanna exit, we want to again exit one. And we also wanna have display a message. So I'll just say echo, and then I'll say dollar sign. You can say asterisk or the at symbol. Both will print out everything that is passed. One will just do it as an array, the other one will do it as a string. So here, we're good, but I can pass it a message now. And I can say, um, you need to enter something, okay? And that should work like that. Although I usually use quotations, I'm gonna go back and do quotations, but I just wanted to check this. So I'm gonna say errors and I hit that and it says, you need to enter something. But if I enter something, then it just continues without that error. Great, so we have this, we're checking. Um, again, did we pass something? If not, run our error function and give it this. Okay, and again, we don't have to, but I always just like putting things in quotations. You're less likely to get errors that way. Okay, so uh, here we can say, uh, instead of you need to enter something, how about we say you need to enter a file name, right? Uh, so next we're gonna check, okay, not just did they enter something, and this doesn't have to be in quotations. I go back and forth on whether I want it in quotations or not, it really doesn't matter. But down here I'm gonna say dash F dollar sign one, and what that does is it's going to take what the user inputs and check it. Is it a file that exists? Okay. If not, then we're going to say error dollar sign one is not a file. Okay. So again, uh, it's going to exit out. So I can even say down here, oops, 
this is the end of the script, okay? So if I run this and I don't give it anything, it should say, you need to enter a file name. Let's create a file real quick. I'm just gonna say touch file.txt. So if I list it out, my script and that file exist. So now, again, if I run it, it gives me, you need to enter a file name and it exits before continuing, right? Um, so now I can give it something. I can say just whatever. And it's gonna say what I typed is not a file. But if I give it a file name, file.txt, it says it gets to the end of the script. This is the end of the script. Great. Let's uh, go a little bit more with this. So again, uh, we're saying if this fails. We don't have to say if it's true because it's going to continue in the script if it's true. Um, so it, you don't have as many indentations and it's just shorter and it's cleaner. Uh, but let's go ahead and add a little bit more to this. I also like to do something like this. And this is just a personal preference. And I'm going to copy and paste some code here because... Uh, it's a little bit quicker, but I'm saying red, and then I'm giving it a value here, uh, normal and value. And what I like to do here is I would like to do this. So whatever text you pass into the error function will be displayed in red, and then it will go back to normal after that. Uh, so again, I can say nothing, and it will display that in red. I can give it something, and it will tell me that's not a file. But if I do give it a file name, there we go. And we're exiting with exit code of one. So I can actually check to make sure this script ran properly. So if I was to do this, I can say uh, echo yes, but if it fails, echo no. So right now I'm not giving everything. So it's exo echo, eh, it's exiting and it's saying, no, you failed. The, the last command didn't run. That's why we're doing exit one instead of exit. Because if we just did exit, it thinks the script made it to a successful completion. Um, and then I can give it a file, you know, something like that. It's still going to say that it failed. But if I give it the file.txt, it should say yes this time because it never got to that error function. Great. Let's go ahead and clear the screen and we'll go back into our script here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do another check, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if there's a second argument, okay? So we'll go this dollar sign two. And we're going to say, okay, if there's not a dollar sign two, we can then do error as well. You know, error dollar sign two or uh, sorry, uh, echo second arg needed, right? And that would work. We can, we can run it. So I can run it like this. Don't worry about all that. It gets there because second arg needed, and then I can give it something. It doesn't check what it is, but it made it to the end successfully. Uh, but if we go back in here, uh, let's say I wanted to run uh, a few things, a few options in there. I could go like this. Whoop. I can say... echo thank you and then I can say this and then I can do something after that I can like list out files but I'm just gonna do echo commands to keep it simple and I'll say continue or whatever I'll just say hello world it doesn't matter I'm just showing that I'm grouping uh, a few commands here but because I'm putting them in these parentheses it's considered a sub function so if I was to run this again if I do this, that, that makes sense. But if I don't give it that argument, it should have exited right here, right? Because obviously it ran our error function. Well, the thing is, since it's a subprocess, when it exited, that subprocess function uh, finished and it exited, but it didn't exit our full script. So how do we get it to kill our entire script and still give that proper exit code? So we'll go back into our script here. And what we do is at the beginning of our script, we're going to do... Uh, a command like this. We're going to say, we're going to create a variable called proc, okay? Or whatever you want to call it. We're going to say dollar sign, dollar sign. What is dollar sign, dollar sign? Well, we know what dollar sign one is, dollar sign at, dollar sign asterisk. Dollar sign, dollar sign is the process of the current running script. So in our error function, instead of exiting, what we're going to do is we're going to say kill. We're going to use the kill command. And there's different options here. We're going to go to 10. I'm not going to get into it, but... Uh, 
just from what I read, that's what we should be using here. Uh, but there's different options when you're killing uh, the script. And we're just going to say dollar sign proc. Oh, capital P, because that's how we wrote it. I, or we can call it PID. In my notes, in my, in my testing of this, I wrote proc. Uh, PID might be a little bit more whatever. Uh, so yeah, so now, before when I ran this, it told us the second argument is needed, but continued. Let's, let's see what happens now. Ha ha. Okay, so our subprocess continued, which is good, and our main script exited. But let's also do this. So we want to make sure, in fact, I haven't tested this, but we're going to do this. We're going to do that, and it says no, that it failed. So actually, my what I'm about to show you may not be necessary, but uh, from... My experience, you're supposed to do this too. So we're going we're gonna to go over it. We're going to do a trap. So we're going to say trap exit 1, 10. And uh, supposedly just adding that uh, is supposed to give us our proper exit code. Uh, but apparently it was working properly without that. Let me see. We'll run this again. There we go. No. Wait, did it say yes or no last time I ran it? Yeah, it said no. So I'm not sure exactly what's happening there. But... Uh, you're supposed to do the trap command, which I don't know a whole lot about. I should read more into it and do a video on that. But uh, this is our code so far. And yeah, so let's let's go over it real quick. We're setting some variables up here for our process, our uh, color codes, just because I like colors and errors telling you, you know, red, this is an error. And we're going to say echo and kill uh, with dash 10 for our process if we get to an error. So again, here we can get the value of one. If there's nothing, we're going to ask for a file name. Then we're going to check that it's a file. If they did enter something, if not, then it's going to exit. And then here we're going to say echo thank you, error, and we're going to pass it the error and then hello. So this will continue because it's a sub process, um, which you may or may not want. And then what we're going to do after that is, uh, well, we're either going to continue or not. But here we're going to kill if we don't give it that second argument. Okay, so I think I said and did everything properly. Yes, so we got no there. But if I pass it this, we got yes. Perfect. Uh, also, uh, keep in mind, uh, if you want to, we can also pass new line characters to this, uh, but we have to da add dash, um, dash E to this. So what I can do in here is you need to enter a file, uh, <clears throat> file name, and then I can say uh, backslash N now exiting, right? So now if I do our script and I don't give it anything as the first argument, it will give it as two lines. So you can pass multiple lines into it that way. That's one way to pass multiple lines. Um, also, oh, one more thing that I didn't do uh, is we want to, at the end of our echo command here, what we want to do is uh, greater than at two. And that will tell uh, when it prints this, it's going to print it as error text. So if you're piping this into another program, it's not standard out, it's error out, so it can ignore it. Or if you're just trying to get the errors, you can grab it. It just distinguishes between the two or differ, 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 it tells the difference between the two. <laughs> okay. So again, we got an error here. Give it that. It's going to tell me it's not a file. If I say file.txt, we get that. Hello world. Uh, we need a second argument. Give it a second argument. And it finally gets to the end of the script. Okay. Uh, so I hope that made sense. Uh, at least some of it. Uh, play with this script. If you look in the description of this video, you will be able to find uh, a copy of this script up on Pastebin. Uh, and if we want to, you can go to my, if we want to, if you want to, you go to filmsbychris.com. And of course, you can go to the software section. If you click on notes, it will list all my paste spin stuff. And uh, I just uploaded this one, so it hasn't been updated to this list because this list gets updated once or twice a day with a cron job. But uh, you can type through here. So again, if you want to type in error, it's going to bring up everything with error. You know, you can say bash error, and it'll bring up everything with bash error. So you should be able to find the script there. But again, it's in the link in the description. But if you want to look through my other files, you can do that there. Anyway, this is uh, Chris from filmsbychris.com. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you have a great day.